Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10, live from our studios here at Adesawe in Accra. I am Martin Nesidu Data. This bulletin is also live on our website, 3news.com, and we're also streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana and also on DSTV channel 279. I am Martin Nesidu Data. Here are the highlights we have for you this Friday evening, starting from issues regarding health. Talo Ghana says all affected persons are on board the CSV Lancelot and, K, uh, and NKN vessels who tested positive are being brought on shore for isolation and case management. This follows confirmation that 57 of the 200 personnel on board the uh, two vessels are being tested uh, and then uh, they have already tested positive for COVID-19 and so far uh, 57 persons in all have tested after contact tracing. Away from that, residents of Wager in Accra have started counting their losses after Thursday evening's torrential rains ripped off more than 50 houses, uh, the roofs of more than 50 houses with one casualty. NADMO has commenced assessment of the damage caused by the rains. Now, the leadership of Parliament has strongly advised members of the, of the Parliamentary Service staff to desist from inviting the public to the legislature as MPs and other staff are reported to have tested positive to the coronavirus. Majority Leader Oseiche Mensa Bonsu says any staff who intends to invite anybody must do so with express instructions from the clerk and leadership of the House. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, has projected a 5 to 8 percent increase in fuel prices at the local pumps during the first pricing window, which will be in June. This, the Executive Secretary Duncan Amwa attributed to the nearly 2 percent depreciation of the city this month and rebounding of the crude oil prices and petroleum prices on the international market. Uh, so those are the local stories we have for you in terms of headlines. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world. We're starting from the United States of America. Clearly, apart from the coronavirus, the major topic being talked about is that brutal manhandling of a black man in the United States of America, which has led to mass destruction of property in Minnesota. So the former Min uh, Minneapolis police uh, officer seen in a video with his knee on George Floyd's neck has been arrested and faces charges of third degree murder and manslaughter. Uh, that's according to Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman. The officer Derek Chauvin was taken into custody on Friday by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, um, John Harrington said in a news conference. So yeah, it's actually um, Minneapolis, Minnesota where the incident happens, mass protests. Still in the U.S. though, President of that country, Donald Trump, has said that the U.S. is terminating its relationship with the World Health Organization, saying the group has not made any reforms after the coronavirus. The World Health Organization and 37 countries have launched the COVID-19 Technology Access Pool, an alliance aimed at making coronavirus vaccines, tests, treatments, and other technologies available to all countries that may need it. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, let's go straight to the details of our stories now. We will shelve issues regarding coronavirus for a moment. This time around, let's go to that other major talking point, what happened in the United States of America. The former Minneapolis police officer seen in a video with his knee on George Floyd's neck has been arrested and faces charges of third degree murder and manslaughter, according to the Hennepin County Judge Mike Freeman. Um, the officer, Derek Chauvin, was taken into custody on Friday by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. 
the Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, John Harrington, said in a news conference. What we also do know is that protests erupted in cities across the United States over the deadly arrest uh, of George Floyd, an unarmed black man who was pinned to the ground by the knee of a white police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Protesters rallied in Minneapolis for a third night on Thursday into Friday with some uh, demonstrators overtaking a police building and setting it on fire. So this isn't the first time, and it probably actually looks as if this may not be the last time, but it looks as if this has been the only time that such a major action has been taken by the black community in the United States of America. Let's talk to um, Amnesty International. They have been monitoring human rights events globally, and the country director here in Ghana has joined us via Skype to let us understand what that body could do uh, to help in the fight against, you know, um, racism, which has been an age-old problem in the United States of America. Robert um, Akutua Mwafo is the country director for Amnesty International uh, Ghana. Uh, he's joined us on, the, uh, on, on Skype. Good evening, um, Robert, and thank you for your time. Good evening to your um, viewers and good evening to um, everyone in the studio. What what does Amnesty International, I mean, clearly you'll be speaking more on a global context now, but what does Amnesty International make of development in the United States? Thank you very much. For us at Amnesty International, um, this is another show of racism, of um, the hatred, uh, hatredness towards the black community, which we believe that needs urgent attention. Um, we all know that this matter of um, issues of blacks being murdered or being um, um, killed by the police in America is an age-old thing that is happening because in several instances we have not seen a clear end of these cases or a proper um, 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 account for these issues. It continues happening and that is what we believe is a worrying trend mm -hmm. and therefore we are calling, that is what we are calling on all and sundry to pay attention to the matter and raise and um, our voices mm. towards ensuring that the issues of getting black people killed by the police, by near instances of people taking their keys out of their pocket, this instance of where the person is being judged is being accused of using a false um, 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 document at um, a, a grocery store, mm. is, are all things that we believe that they go beyond what um, is expected. Yeah, it, it, it seemed to have been all talk, less action since time immemorial issues of racism in the United States, this isn't the first time and, and globally as well, but it looks as if the black community in the U.S. seem to be taking the issue into, uh, taking the law into their hands, this time destroying property, making sure that their case is heard. Do you think that is the right approach to this? Um, Amnesty International does not encourage any form of a violence, um, violence protest or attacks. What we believe is that um, once uh, people get a lot of these issues up to their neck, they may behave in certain ways which we do not approve. But we believe that it's, in, it's time that the government of the United States and governments around the world paid attention. And we don't want these things to happen. That is why we are encouraging governments to pay attention and ensure that these things do not happen and do not go addressed. Mm. We believe that accountability is the key thing, that when issues like this happen, we should see a clear support of government to discourage any form of um, ensuring that accountability does not happen. Already, um, we have had news of, um, of the autopsy report of Floyd coming, and Mr. Floyd coming out, and incidents of be, are being pointed at his already existing health conditions instead of paying attention to what really happened to him. Mm. And these are some of the signs that already start happening and we get the cases not properly addressed. Mm. We believe that it is important that we focus our issue on the current matter and not focus on other issues. Mm. If we do not address these issues properly, this is how we'll get people taking the law into their own hands. 
We're grateful for making time to speak with us. Certainly in the coming days, uh, we'll still be, you know, picking your thoughts to see how things, you know, unfold in the United States. Thank you very much, uh, Robert Akuto Amwa, for Country Director uh, of Amnesty International here in Ghana, joining us there. So I'm sure you've also seen those videos on social media and you've shared your thoughts on it. Do let us know what they are on our various social media handles. We'll be happy to hear from you. This is News at 10 on TV3. Later in the show, the Ghana Meteorological Agency has given a warning of more rains expected. Stay with us. We have details of that coming up shortly. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. And we're going to uh, some other stories. We know that uh, the um, president will be addressing the country on Sunday and very likely the restrictions that we currently have may be relaxed. We are uh, uncertain about that, but it is one of the expectations from the president's speech. We all wait to hear, to hear what the president will say. In the meantime, the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists has asked government to expand the laboratory testing services before easing restrictions placed on social gathering. According to the association, COVID-19 testing capacity must be expanded uh, to all regions, especially the former, uh, the former Bono Half region, uh, specifically Kentampo Health Research Center and the Upper East region's Navrongo Health Research Center. The association in a statement insisted it is imperative to make adequate provisions for COVID-19 testing to include the use of more real-time PCR for testing in our clinical laboratories, the operationalization of over 100 gene expert equipment, and the use of rapid diagnostic test kits as approved by the Food and Drugs Authority for mass screening by qualified professionals. And uh, I think it's um, one of the key things a number of people have been talking about. We've been joined in studio by Michael uh, Omari, he is the Acting General Secretary of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists. Good evening, sir, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Right. Um, how necessary is it that we keep testing while the president or the restrictions are eased? That is what you are calling for. What is the reason behind this call? Thank you, and good evening to your viewers. We are asking government to expand the testing before the restrictions are eased. Because in Ghana, the COVID that we have had from the statistics and the data they have presented to us, it shows that many of the people are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. That means they have the disease without showing signs and the spread is going up and up. So when the restrictions are uh, relaxed, many of the spread is, go it is going to continue. Mm. So if we don't test at all the necessary centers, the districts, the regions, and we continue to restrict the testing to few centers, it means more people are going to have the disease before we will come down here and uh, it will spread. Mm. But if we are able to test within the shortest possible time, we will be able to pick mm. those infected and then isolate, uh, them, and isolate treat them. them and treat them. But the, the concern, we do know that the president in uh, one of these um, address to the nation said that there was going to be the increase in testing facilities across the country. At least he even promised that hopefully about 88 different health facilities will be um, built, some completed. Then they would all have these facilities to be able to help in testing. How does that play in the scheme of things? Does it help, you think? Definitely it will help. But if we are not going to build a facility, it is uh, problematic. We have centers that have partial capacity as at now, like the GeneSpace centers, which need few support, and then they should be able to have 100 GeneSpace centers. They need only uh, glove boxes and others that will contain the infection, and then they will be able to test. Mm. There have been rapid uh, cases that have been developed even by some of our members, and it is with the uh, Food and Drugs Authority. As we speak, more health workers are getting uh, infected. infected, and it is imperative that we uh, that is so that even at the, every hospital, the rapid screening is done, mm. not do the temperature checking and those things, but rapid screening to track those who are uh, uh, having uh, the antibodies which are possible infections, so before they attend to them. Mm. And also, we in our release, we ask 
for the provision of PPE for health workers and uh, medical laboratory scientists. Because the PPE that are coming, mm -hmm. now the health and, uh, workers are using this fabric, yeah, uh, fabric PPEs, yeah. and uh, it is becoming a problem. So we don't know. Either it is the PPEs that are not being effective, though we trust uh, Food and Drugs Authority that they have done a good work by approving it. But you don't know whether that is where the infection is coming from or as we speak. Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory mm. Scientists is having about 11 of our members infected. At, at the same time, the, our vice president is in, is in self-quarantine because mm. he has been exposed. Okay. And many, many. So we, uh, this is the time so that we, we have to expand. So increase testing. Testing so that we will be able... It, you see, this infection issue is a rare time thing. So if okay. you are not able to identify it within today, tomorrow, he infects more people before you identify him. Then because we are not problem. fighting the COVID. Okay. Well, certainly in the coming days, uh, we'll be picking your thoughts on how institutions are going to be managing the lifting of restrictions. That is, if the president does lift it on Sunday when he addresses the country. Thank you, Michael Amo Omari, Acting General Secretary of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists. This is still news at 10 on TV3. Stay with us. We have some more stories for you shortly. very much for staying with us. So you would recall that in the last few days it's been raining quite uh, heavily in major parts of the capital, Accra. Some areas have actually uh, witnessed flooding and some persons have had their property destroyed. In the meantime, the Ghana Meteorological Agency is warning of more rains in the coming days. While many have also complained that they do not receive the weather warnings from Ghana Meteo uh, Agency in time, they are also saying that they have devised other ways of making sure people get up to the minute information mostly before there is um, any major rain. Felicity Ahafianyo is a, meteorolo uh, is a meteorologist with the Ghana Meteo and uh, she's joined us on the phone line to help us understand what exactly is to be expected in terms of the weather and how they are working to make sure people get adequate and up to the minute information. Madam, good evening and thank you for your time. Yeah, good evening, Michael. We, we have seen some rains. We know May, June, July, it's a rainy season. Are we? You say we should expect more rains? Yes, uh, at the start of the season, when we came out with the seasonal weather forecast for 2020, we stated that we are anticipating more rain slightly above the normal rainfall that we record over some places, but other places are likely to see uh, below rainfall. And then we use last year as uh, an example that what happened last year some areas will have similar trends and then some areas will get a little below what we have to last year all right the the main concern for many is that we just see the weather change, then we anticipate it's going to rain, then we start putting things in place. Your outfit, the Ghana Meteor Agency, is supposed to be giving us up to the minute information and warnings before these storms come in. How regularly are you able to do this? Thank you very much, Martin. I think uh, this is a, a good question, and I hope that uh, our listeners and viewers will uh, pick this information and put it into use. When you come to Ghana Meteorological Agency, we have a network, we have a lot of officers that are on the field working. As we speak right now, we have uh, more than uh, 22 synoptic stations in Ghana that people are doing working this night. Mm -hmm. And they put the weather information every hour. We do 24-7. Now, these observers take these parameters uh, or the weather element at their various stations scattered across the whole country and then we have the automatic weather stations also scattered across the country. We collect all these data. Then the forecaster on duty or the meteorologist on duty take this information, plot it, analyze it and then go on to the model charts, the climate model charts that we have. Then pick them, the winds at the various level, the pressures at the, at the surface the geopotential field, the, the, uh, the competitive available potential energy chart, the right. relative humidity chart, and so on. We collect all this one, analyze them, and then we come out with the forecast 
for the day, for the week, and then for the month ahead. Okay. Now, as the central analysis and weather forecasting office, as we call CAFO, that is where we do all the forecasting stuff for Ghana. We issue three times a day forecast. The morning one is ready at 5 a.m. The afternoon one is ready at 11 a.m. Then the evening one is ready at 5 p.m. Okay. Now, on Mondays, we issue the weekly weather action. That takes care of the whole week. Okay. So that we know from Monday to Tuesday evening, we are anticipating a storm. Wednesday to Thursday, uh, the weather will be partly cloudy with just a few cases. Then the weekend, Friday to Sunday, you know that the weekend is going to be free or mm -hmm. the weekend is going to be um, a, a rainstorm that is going to form and then affect most areas. Right. Now, when we are done with this, we will send the information by email. And I believe to be clear, I've been doing a great job for Jesus. Right. You've been tele uh, telecasting the weather to them. And then we have other few questions that if the very our thoughts to also went ahead to okay. create WhatsApp pages that people can get this information. Or if you go to our Facebook page, you will have the information there. You go to so you put it on your Facebook and other social media platforms regularly. Hello, yes, Felicity. Felicity, can you hear me? Yes, I can Yes, so you. your, what you're saying is you put these regular updates on your various social media uh, pages, specifically Facebook and uh, Twitter and also any other mode of uh, spreading the information. Is that it? Yes, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, certainly in the coming days, we'll be coming to you and making sure to see if you actually do uh, update on these social media platforms so we can also take it and let our viewers know. This is News at 10. Thank you very much for watching. We've been speaking with uh, Felicity Ahafianyo. She is a meteorologist at the Ghana Meteor Office. That's it for the bulletin. It came your way from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra. I am Martin Esiedu Dati. Do have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend and stay positive. Always.